Do you dare to confront the possibility that the veil between the living and the dead may be thinner than we think? Because when the lights go out and the spirits awake, anything can happen. Tonight on Newsworthy, two words and two question marks. Scoured the podcast world and finally found us. Newsworthy with Steve and Jerry, where we delve into all things mysterious, macabre, or out of this world and decide if they are truly newsworthy. Two words and two question marks. Hello, I'm Ed Locke with USA Mortgage. Tax season is upon us. Did you know that 47% of Americans are planning to use their tax refunds for everyday expenses, home improvements, and vacations? What if you used your tax refund for a new home instead? Again, this is Ed Locke with USA Mortgage. Your tax refund can be used towards down payment, closing costs, or paying down existing debt to help get approved. So before you spend that tax refund, let's get together and see how to best utilize those funds to invest in your future and your new home. Call or text me at 502-680-0953. Again, that's 502-680-0953. NMLS ID 448-908, DAS Acquisitions, LLC, doing business as USA Mortgage, NMLS ID 227262. This is not a commitment to lend. Additional terms and conditions apply. USA Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Hello, hello. How are you doing, Mr. Steve? I'm doing great, Jerry. I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm great and getting better. Awesome. Great and getting better. I'm excited. I got to talk to a lot of weird, crazy people this week. So I heard. Not weird, crazy people. Normal Everyday people with weird, crazy stories. Yeah, that that's a much better way of putting yeah. it. Yeah, because some weird stuff going on in some people's lives that you would, in some cases, in one of the cases, uh, a person you've known and talked to for a long time and had no idea, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The other one and, was and a stranger who didn't know. Worked them. in a place. Worked with a <laughs> coworker for a long time. Um, yeah. So pretty stoked by all that. That's going to be fun stuff to get into here in just a minute. But you know, I was thinking the other day, Jerry. That? that there is no way that the guy who invented the Ferris wheel and the guy that entered, invented the merry-go-round ever knew each other. You don't think so? Mm-mm. Why is that? They were in a different circle. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 good point. <laughs> good point. That's one of them common sense things, right? Yeah. It's... That kind of sums mine up, too. Did you hear about the invisible man that married the invisible woman? Mm, no. Their kids are nothing to look at either. <laughs> Hey, just common sense, right? <laughs> Comes with the territory. Oh, that's good. Good job, Jerry. My well, daughter, bravo. by the way, from the time she Standing was up. little, loved scary stories. I tell her the story about when she was one year old. Uh, her brother would typically sit on the couch with her mom, and she would sit in the recliner with me to watch movies. And if it was a scary story... In an attempt to make sure I didn't scare her, I would tell her, this is kind of scary, so if you want, we'll go in your room and play. Just so if she wanted, she didn't think that she had to to stay. She took that as me being scared of the movie, which meant every time a scary part would come on, my one-year-old kid would stand up, take her little pudgy fingers, and cover my eyes and say, Uno, watch, Uno, watch. (laughs) Was not afraid at all, until... She was six, seven, eight years old. Uh, Did you ever see a movie called Hollow Man? Yeah. Hollow Man turned my daughter from being afraid of no scary movie to refusing to watch anything scary. From that moment on, it was over. There was no scary movies, and to this day, she's 
a 30 year old adult now and she will not watch scary stories and it all changed with hollow man so she's not gonna like this episode at all uh, yeah that's probably safe to say <laughs> i know she does listen sometimes and that's she great. does she uh, does but i don't know if she'll be listening to this one uh first of all let me just if you're listening to our podcast do the like, share, subscribe thing. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. You always hear that as to how that helps, and and I always was like, whatever. What does that help? It it really does. And here's an example. I was talking to one of my coworkers today. And they had no idea that I did a podcast, uh, or we did a podcast. Right. But as soon as I told her and told her the name, this this will make you happy. Because sometimes on certain places, we have a hard time finding our podcast. We yeah. have to be very specific about what, what we yeah, we search for. It doesn't come up. Right. Well, tonight I, or today when she searched for it, it was the second one on, behind the one newsworthy that's always there because right. that girl does an episode a day or whatever yeah. um, for the headline. Right there, number two. And yeah. I was I was stoked. I was really I was getting ready to prepare to say, well, you have to do search for this. It was, she's for like, Oh, is this it? And I'm like, yep. She's like, yeah. Very so nice. Picked up two new followers today. That was great. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, definitely. If you like what you hear, um, want to hear more, share, like, follow that whole thing. Send us an email too, because we, we are, we've got a whole calendar now of things mm-hmm. that we've got coming up. But if someone has a great idea, we don't mind at all redoing the calendar and plugging their their podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. You mentioned send us an email. Where would they send that? Newsworthy with Steve and Jerry at gmail.com. Absolutely. All one word. Um, one big long word, but one word. Yeah, it's a long word. You got to check it twice. It's like Santa's list to make sure it's spelled right, right and all that jazz. Absolutely. But, um, so... Let's just get into it, because we've got a big interview tonight with Bruce from Lafayette, Kentucky. Um, he is, I want to I want to just take a minute and, and say a couple of things before we get into starting with Bruce. Okay. So when I first, con- when Bruce first contacted me, it was on a web, or a uh, chat, a group chat, a paranormal group chat, and he's like, man, I'm not very good at this tech stuff. Uh I'd really like to tell somebody my story. And I'm like, yeah, well, we'd love to hear it. So I send him a link to the web, because everything on this publisher that we use, Lispin, we send a link, an email link. Right. And they click the link, and it connects them right to us so we can download and record everything. So I didn't, you know, that's really easy for most people. And I didn't stop to think about anything until I started talking with Bruce and realized that Bruce was 72 years old. So in this interview, and it's more of him telling a story, couldn't he really hear me a lot, so there's not a lot of interaction between us. Okay. Um, And his phone kind of cut out in a couple places, but just bear with it, because his story definitely needs to be told. It is spooky. It is scary. Um, And... It's weird because it happens in an old church. And, uh, you know, I've told on here a few times, the most scared I've ever been is in the middle of a church. Right. So. um, The one that never got back with us. Right. Unfortunately. I'm going to try again this spring. I'm I'm really going to try to reach out to them. I may even stop by there if I you see You probably cars. need to. If you, um, I'm, I'm afraid that they think we're some devil worshipers or yeah. something. And. And uh, that's probably why they this church hasn't reached back to us about, would you get in touch with me about this strange supernatural <laughs> experience I had in one of your buildings? So, yeah, we'll be right back. Um, now, we're going to let this play in its entirety. Bruce does a great job. I want you to just, I, if Bruce happens to listen to this episode, now he has never listened to a podcast, okay? But I told him I'd send him a link. If you listening, Bruce, I can't express to you enough how grateful we are for you to get through the tech to get this story out. Absolutely. Uh, also, in in the uh, interview, he mentions a house, an old church, and I've got pictures of both, and we're going to load them to this website. So, anywho, without further ado, here's Mr. Bruce. 
Good evening. We are here with Bruce, and Bruce is going to tell us about some hauntings that he's personally experienced um, about a house that he owned, and I'm stoked by this because he's done a lot of work to this. He sent me a before and kind of an after picture, and man, I'm just beautiful work, Bruce. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, tell us, tell us, Bruce, about how this all started and, and how you came. Because you said we, and, and before we came on the air, that you, there was a weird way you came about finding this place. So, tell us all about it. Well, uh, my sister in law was married to a Green Beret, and my wife and I were living in Minnesota for 12 years. And if you know anything about Minnesota, I saw 75 below zero once there, and we were burnt out. We were burnt out in our trade that we were in up there, and just a life-changing deal. We, my wife said she, that was her only sister. She always wanted to move near her, sis, near her sister. So me being the great husband that I was, I decided to hell with it. Let's go to Kentucky and see what's up. So we moved down here. And uh, I'm driving with my sister-in-law down Lafayette Road, and I'm an artist, you know. So, I mean, I've just uh, – and I'm a carpenter, so I, I don't know. I see things to me that other people don't always see, you know. Anyhow, I'm, uh, I'm really watch stuff. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Anyhow, I no, noticed I one day driving down Lafayette Road that there's this – Mm. did it to me again uh oh, that's okay. i'm good. driving down lafayette road and i noticed out of the corner of my eye it looked like there was a old building down there and i said man i'd like to go down there and see that and the next trip we went through there we turned down there and there it was this old church all closed up i mean it's abandoned, obviously, and needed a lot of work, but it was solid, you know. And I just didn't see a vision as soon as I seen it. And uh, I went up to the big double doors. They're like 10-foot double doors with a big arch over it. Looks kind of like a Woolitzer. Anyhow, I opened the door. It was unlocked, and it was just oh, one, big, one big room. Nothing in it but a couple uh, propane heaters that they'd put in and uh it took me three a couple of took, propane heaters it, and yeah it took me three months to find out who owned it and there's an <laughs> actually there's another church on that same road closer to lafayette road and it's a red brick church and it was presbyterian and it was still active there was four members going there in their way in their 80s and uh, the guy's name was Douglas Smithson, uh, and uh, he was a heck of a guy. Uh, and he said, "Yeah, they bought it in the in the during the war because they had so many kids coming, you know, being born, and they had this big expansion. All of a sudden, they needed more room for schools, uh, Sunday schools. So they bought that church that had been closed down, and." Uh, that's how they owned it. And he said, I said, well, what are you going to do with it now? You know? And, and he says, well, we don't know if we're going to let it fall down or, or uh, what we're going to do with it. And I said, man, I'd like to buy it and make a house out of it. He said, he said, boy, are you crazy? Do you know how much it would cost to do that? And I said, sir, I don't know how much, but I, I want it, you know? And I t convinced him that I wanted it. And we went to a lawyer. He drove, which was scary because he was, he was nervous. <laughs> and oh, no. anyhow, uh, we went to a lawyer and I didn't even know then how much they were going to sell it for. And I only had so much money, you know, on me. And, uh, anyhow, I said, sitting there with him, I said, I don't know I don't know how much you're going to sell us for, sir, but if I don't have enough money, would you take, you know, so much down? And he says, no, 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 no. Got real angry. He said, we're not going to sell it for a profit. We're going to sell it for what we paid for it. 
two thousand oh, no. dollars. Two thousand dollars. Yep. <laughs> Holy buckets. That's On awesome. Well, anyhow, needless to say, I bought it. And uh I was working in Katie's and we're living in an apartment over there and trying to do carpentry work and then going way over there to do car, you know, just to start with this. It was mass, it would have been a massive undertaking, you know, but I, I was game. And I finally told my wife after a few weeks of that, we're just going to have to, it's summer. We're going to have to just move in it. Like it'll be like a camping trip. You know, we're just going to move in it and start. She said, okay. So we moved all our stuff over there and, uh, I'd never had a problem or any any feeling or anything that whole time working. But when we moved in there, all our boxes and they had go-karts, day beds, just everything, all our furniture. And, uh, you know, it's just one big room. So we just, okay, this corner is going to be our bedroom. We set our bed way back in the corner and all the stuff's just, it's just stuff scattered everywhere. And this is our first full night of staying there. You know, like I said, it's double doors and they had a lock on it. They both would swing open. You could pull a chain and open them both. And it was, it was dark in there. There was one light switch. I got power turned on one light switch by the front doors, 15 amp <laughs> service. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But man, we, it was really, it was fun in a way. I woke. So one light switch, 15 amps, which is nothing. That barely do a light light lamp right now. Yeah. So no, you're fine. Keep we we're right there where we we oh we dropped him. Can't see your hand in front of your face. I woke up hearing, and these are old wood floors. I heard. Something walking sounded like old boots, just the, it hollow, just vibrating the building. It was so, so freaking scary. And I'm in the bed. Oh, this wow. No, no, no. You're still here, Bruce. You're I'm in here. the bed and I'm, I run through all that maze without knowing you couldn't see it. And I'm just going by where everything I thought was and flip the light switch on. And there's my wife sitting up with the terrified look on her face, you know, and there's nothing there. The kids are wow. asleep. The dog's asleep. I go back to the bed with the light on I'm sitting there for a while. And I said, I mean, I, I was just, I've never had anything like that. I said, did we both dream the same dream? Is that what it was? And, you know, you lay there for a while and it was, it was scary. I'm telling you, it was terrifying. And, uh, I thought, well, I don't know. Finally, I started dozing off and, uh, she fell asleep and I went up, turned the light off, laid back down. And my mind's thinking of this and I'm just drifting off till almost asleep and here it come again. It got louder and it, I swear this time it sounded like there was chains on these feet or something. It was a, a, a loud jingling of, of some sort like chains. And Eesh. I thought whatever it is. Could it have been like, uh, what, are, what are those things that, People used to ride with the horses. Uh, ah. Whatever it is, it's going to have to kill me. And I'm, th I'm thinking that in a millisecond. Now, I'm I get up, and I made about three steps running towards that door, and that door slammed shut so loud it shook the building. I, I flicked the light on, and there she is again sitting up scared to death. There's nobody there. And the chain on that door is swinging. Mm. Oh, I got cold chills. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. So uh, wow. needless to say, we, we didn't sleep that night. 
anymore. That was your very first night in the house. In the very church. first night in that house. Yes, sir. Lordy mercy. So I had a, you know, we was going to church and uh, it's called the lighthouse. And uh, we had the minister come there and pray. He, he kind of laughed about it, but he, he knew we were serious. So he, he prayed over it and did this and that. And we never had anything else like that happen. But there were other things that happened in there later. And uh, actually, I sold I sold it after my wife was 58 at the time. And she she fell in that church uh, and her I took her to the hospital. She fell over buckling in pain. I took her to the hospital and she died a year later. Oh. Uh, her pancreas had burst and so anyhow that's that was and after that I we had grandkids there we had hundreds of kids there from the uh, church because we actually ended up after you know I know this is a long kind of deal but when we moved in there and after we got situated we ended up buying the schoolhouse next to it then we her father was a preacher and my wife's father was a preacher in Indiana he came down when the the red church, those people, they died off. It was vacant, and oh man, they it was vacant. Me. And uh, he bought it in a, at an auction for huh. twenty thousand. So wow. my my wife, being a grew up in church to a preacher, you know. Anyhow, my uh, son Daniel. He, he became the minister there, so we all had church there. So we ended up owning all those, uh, that whole neighborhood. And uh, <laughs> kind of, well, then the, the Bennett's house, which is older than, it's the first house. It was a log house, two-story, and it had a Civil War doctor's office on it. That's next to the church that we fixed. Well, anyhow, uh the old lady that lived there, she was like about four foot nine. I'd change her light bulbs because she couldn't reach them. I'm six three. Oh, wow. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, <laughs> that became open. So I have two sons. My son, Zachary, bought that. So we got this whole place, seems like. Well, anyhow, wow. when she was the old lady that owned that house, uh, when I'd go over there, she had a big yard in the back. You know, this is, this is country. And there's a graveyard back there. And her grass was way high back there. And I thought, well, I'll go, I'll cut that grass to go to that little graveyard, you know, so if anybody wanted to visit it or something. And it was fenced in. Uh, and there was, let's see, one, two, three, four. There's five graves in there. One was a... a a son, and then there was a, a a woman, and then there's three babies. One was one was like three three days old. It was weird, kind of three days, three months, three years. And I mean, this is the 1700s. That's crazy. So Anyhow, basically, there's a family plot back there in there. Right, and, right, wow. and uh, and and you couldn't it, the the little, little graves, and you could barely read from the weathering oh. their names. And I, be me being kind of an artist, uh, I got some chalks, and I went back there. I weed eated that, cleaned it all up where you could see everything real good, and I took some chalks and rubbed where you could read their little names and stuff. It was, it was really sad, you know, anyhow, uh, the, here's, here's the kicker of it though. When my son moves in there, him and his, his woman, they had our first grandchild and you know, it's a, they're in a big old bedroom. It's huge. Them old houses like that. Anyhow, right. I live in the, old house the like babies, that. the babies in the baby crib, they've been in there a little bit, you know, but in and out. But 
this was the strangest thing is the baby's in the baby crib and they're laying in bed with the lights on and they're like the youth of today. They're both laying in bed on their cell phones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And while they're laying there, his, his woman looks up and this black mass is coming out of the wall over their bed. <gasps> And it's going over their bed towards the baby's crib. Mm. So she sees this and she turns it on record and she recorded it coming back over the bed, over their bed and going back through that wall. And it, and she showed it to me and it, it was, it was weird. It was, you know, it was a black, like shadow, but it was like lots of shadows. I don't know how to describe it, like a million flies or ants or something all together in some kind of a form going back into that wall. And they they moved out of there. Yeah, <laughs> post haste. <laughs> and that, that house, that house to this day, I think is abandoned. I seen somebody had a, a, a one of those containers where you throw stuff in. Like yeah. I don't know what they were doing with it, but it, it was a neat old house. But yeah, but I, I always that thought, one, yeah. is that is that the woman? checking to see if the baby's okay or is that whatever it was that took those babies going to take that one yeah and they, that's... they didn't want to they didn't want to hang out around and find out you know no but yeah mm -hmm. but you know like i said there was that was a civil war and it was it's still there a little small shack that was the civil war doctor's office in the the civil war Soldiers used to go through that road because Lafayette Road used to not go straight through it. It went through that little horseshoe. And as they. I tell you, that's that's so creepy. But, you know, and I learned about... all that history of uh, like the Civil War shoulders and uh, soldiers and stuff from the, the, the schoolhouse. The lady that lived in it was the school teacher there and her dad was the school teacher there. That's how old that town was. Oh my and, goodness. and she, she was a historian. Uh, she had, a, she had a book out even, uh, I can't, rem I can't exactly remember her name right now, but anyhow, she told me all the history about that area there, that little town that, uh, that we ended up owning most of it. But when, when, when when my wife died, you know, it was a year. So I'd left and went to uh, St. Thomas with her and was there for the year. I never left. And, and, uh, we're gone for an entire year. Wow. We lost Bruce for just a second. Yeah. He's yeah there he is. He's back. Did it again. Uh, okay. when, when I came back, you know, it was like all my grandkids and everybody was there and it was always full. And, you know, that's, that was 3,800 square feet when I got done with it. And wow. there it's me, just me by myself and you know, no kids. Do you care, Bruce, if we post those pictures on the, on the podcast? No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Of the house? No, I don't care. Okay. It's part of the story. So you know. done, it was excellent. You did excellent work. I thought, yeah, I thought that was awesome. Uh, you know, after, Man, after you were talking after, about that black mask in the Bennett house. Yeah. Sorry. I walked all over you there, Bruce. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, it, that's fine. It, that, I was going to ask you that, that, that happened and I, I saw it and I, and I know my son and I know her They're They're not just making that up. It, it actually happened. You know, so. Oh, uh, I, I don't doubt it. What I was going to say is that if I, I feel like that was was not a good thing that was going toward, you know, most of the time. I, I don't either. I it, don't either. We, I never we, did. We, I, yeah. When uh, we hear these stories, if it's a if it's something that's, you know, a spirit that's looking out for someone or a spirit that's looking uh, over something. 
those are generally perceived as not dark, not black. They they really are, you know, and, and you know, I'm a big believer of good and evil and heaven and hell and Jesus and Satan. And, and those things are very representative of that spirit warfare. Um, you know, Satan is black and things of Satan are black and um, things of Jesus and things of, of Christian, you know, uh, of the goodness are typically white, just like the yin and the yang and the Chinese and blah, blah, blah. But I, I definitely don't feel like that was a good thing heading toward the face. Well, anyhow, to, to, to finish this area off, I guess, is uh, the little red church that my, my wife's family actually owned. She's buried there. They made a cemetery. They made that into a cemetery, and she's the only person buried there. She's the first one. Okay. And this is before I moved out of there. We owned an, <laughs> we owned another house that we rented out down on the corner on Lafayette Road. And uh, I had sold it after my wife's death. I sold it, and uh, the lady that bought it slid her sister and her kids move in there and she was going to buy it from them that was how that worked and uh, to finish this kind of story off that's how i met them selling it and everything well they would come down to my house and i mean man i'm, I'm like i say i'm 72 now this is like four four years ago uh wow. they would come down to my house and play my grandkids would come on the weekend sometimes and stay with me and stuff and they'd play with her this lady's kids walking back and forth and they'd walk down that road to that to their house instead of drive it's just a nice walk no i'd say about 500 feet or so to the to lafayette road but anyhow they said one evening they said, well, okay, well, we're going to go home now or whatever. And I said, okay, bye, you know, and everything. I shut the door. And it wasn't, seemed like 20 seconds later, my door, they're banging on my door. I opened it up and they were scared to death, sir. Oh, no. They were scared to death. And they said, Bruce, Bruce, there's a woman coming up the road. I said, a woman coming up the road. And I mean, nobody comes down this road, uh -huh. sir. And I said, what do you mean? And it's it's dark, you know, and I, I'll go out. There's a street light that you can see a little bit. And I go out in the middle of the road. We're standing there. And I mean, they're terrified. They're hanging on me. And I said, a woman, how do you know it's a woman? And her daughter said, I know it's a woman. I saw her. I saw her dress. And I said, you saw her dress. And she's like, when I'm listening to this, all of a sudden, something white come out of seemed like out of nowhere and run across that road and into this little woodsy area and you could see it and it looked like it looked white but it looked like a uh a, a tattered a tattered flag or something that had like edges you know what i mean in the wind right. while it was running right. fast and, and it like kind of just disappeared and it scared the mm, out of me and you know, oh. my wife, my wife was buried in white. I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was her being mad because it was a woman come down there or what. <laughs> but, but they never walked that street no more. Whoa, man, that's, that sounds like that whole area is just ate up with haunted. I don't know, man. Uh, there, it, it's. It's something. I, and in and one other instance I had in the church, being living there alone, I was sitting on the couch all by myself, and you can't believe how quiet it is in an old building like that, and you're by yourself. And I'm sitting there on the couch. I don't know what I was doing, just thinking or whatever. And something tapped me three times on my left shoulder, just like what? it was. Wow. And when I I turned around expecting somebody going to be there, and there was nobody there. Uh. So anyhow, I uh, the memories and the loneliness and everything else. I I put it up for sale, and and a, a lady bought it with a, a bunch of kids, 
from Memphis. Probably more than two thousand dollars. Yeah, quite a bit. More. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bruce, man, I appreciate you coming on and, and sharing this with us. Um, it is definitely worth checking out. I'd love to be able to go down and check out the Bennett House and the church and stuff at some point. Just that whole area sounds like it's just crawling with haunted stuff. Um, yeah. But I, I definitely it. appreciate you uh, overcoming your technology <laughs> to, to join us tonight. And thank yeah. you so much, Bruce. But I appreciate it. Yeah. I will say one more thing, buddy. When sure. I was 27, uh, believe it or not, I got hit by a train. Oh my goodness! At night, uh, and I went. I mean, it. You'd had to know. Uh, I ended up going to court, and, and they had five lawyers, and I had one, and I won because they had no railroad crossings, no warning sign. It was off a highway, turning left thirty feet, and I went up a hill and seen double tracks at night. And as soon as I saw double tracks, it was like, oh my god! And that, that you know, the ultimate happened. I got hit. I was in a van. If I'd had a seatbelt on, I'd be dead. I went. Lord have mercy. I went That's through uh, the front windshield, landed in a cornfield 80 feet away and got up. Didn't break a bone. Holy buckets. And you were how and old? 27. And wow. as terrifying as that is, and why I'm saying that, I was that scared that night in that church. I can't. I absolutely. Holy Mother Mary! Wow. That's how scary that night was in that church with them footsteps. I can't. And that I, I, and that thing went. I, I I neglected to say that too. Is when that thing came the second time, I heard this. Like that. Ugh. Yep. And then wow. the door slammed. I left that hey. out. Yeah. That's that's scary as joke. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on the show, man. And uh I'll send you a link as soon as it goes live. That way you can check us out. But uh uh Bruce from Lafayette, Kentucky, man, and I don't know about you, but I never want to live in a place where it is negative 75 degrees, ever. <laughs> That's why I moved. Amen. Well, Bruce, it's been a pleasure. Years. I appreciate you. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Awesome story, Bruce. Awesome. Thanks so much. We appreciate you getting a hold of us and telling us your story. And what a good story it is. Yeah, it was. Uh, I can't imagine and, and i really the only downfall I, I have about that is it wasn't i didn't get to actually ask a bunch of questions there was a couple parts in there jerry where he's talking about he has to get to the light switch there's one light switch in this entire church and it's at, by the front doors right um because it's old i mean that's the only it was one big room and a bathroom that was it yeah and he kind of set it up a little bit like they had their bedroom in one back corner and I'm using air quotes for bedroom. The kids were in another and they just kind of had stuff laying about because it wasn't really their home yet. Um, so he not only had to get to the front to flip the light switch on, but he had to go around all their stuff that just kind of piled around. Right. So, sure. um, uh, yeah, again, Bruce, man, thanks for coming on the show. We we love guests. Totally if you sure. have an awesome story like Bruce and you want to share it, we want you on the program because we love guests. Or if you don't even want to be online but want to share your story, get us a story and we'll cover it for you if we yeah. think it uh, fits our format. So, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. So, speaking of that. I had a one of my good best friends, uh, Patricia, at, at uh, where I work, my, my day job, if you will, my first day job, um, was telling me that the place we work is haunted. And I was like, eh, whatever. Because it's, I don't look at it, you, when you look at where, and I'm not going to name the building, You, if you guys listen to the show, you know where I work. But uh, I don't want to bring you negative connotations. We have the public in there all the time. Sure. So, um, 
Long story short, I was like, ah, but what I didn't realize is how long that building had actually been there. Okay. Um, that building was actually built on old farmland. Um, and, of course, everybody and their uncle have a story about something that's been built on Indian burial grounds or sure. an old family cemetery or, or something. Right. Um, but long story short, she was telling me that on Saturdays, a lot of times, people have to work there alone. Um, they're doing dispatch, make sure the, the drivers are getting where they need to be, the customers are handled or whatever. But it's a, it's a one-man operation. And she was telling me about a time, and, and I didn't get permission to use names, so we're going to say Jay was working by themselves. Okay. They had brought their nephew into into the uh, office to play with and hang out and just because if you're not actively doing the job, you just got to sit there and wait for the phone to ring. Right. Um, so they were playing ball. They had a little squishy ball, and the way the building was oriented, oriented. Thank you. Oriented at the time was it was open in the center, and around the walls were cubicles, and you worked out one of the cubicles. But they were throwing the ball, and he would the, the nephew would run and get it. Nephew's four or five years old at this time, well past potty training and all that. And she throws the ball, and the nephew is like, um, he looks at the ball, and he looks down the hallway a little bit, looks at the ball, and he's like, yeah, I'm not. I don't want to play ball anymore. And she's like, "Well, why not? What's the problem?" She goes, "Yeah, there's a bad man down there." And down of course, the hallway. Yeah. So of course, there's a look, and you know, there's nothing there. So she's like, "Well, you know what? Let's go get the ball together." So she picks him up, walks down there, and uh, uh, he is so scared. Even in her arms to get that ball, he pees and he has an accident. He pees all over himself. Yeah. And so they get the ball and they're walking back and he's hugging her neck and he's like, Oh, we got to go. He's coming. So, you know, they get back. She takes him to the bathroom to change him. And he starts freaking out and he's like, Oh, he's right behind you. <laughs> Now, of course, she turns around and nothing. There's nothing there. But he definitely saw something. I mean, if you... And not once, but multiple times. Yes. He saw it down the hallway. Yes. Initially, didn't want to go. She picked him up, carried him to get the ball. He saw it again. Then, it scared him enough to make him have an accident. Yes, and then they go to the bathroom and he sees it again in yeah. a different room. Yeah. Now, that goes in... in with other reports that I'd heard and kind of just been picking apart, but dismissing, you know, in a big building like where I work, it's really easy to hear something and it be unexplained, right? Sure. I'm using air quotes again. But on Saturdays, it's a big empty building. And there's been door slamming, footsteps, heavy steps. Right. Crazy. And I have yet to experience any of that in this particular office. Now, I will say, at my other office, at my other work at Century 21, right. me and another realtor in that particular office, if you go there in the evening, because we all have keys to it. So, you know, if I have to go somewhere and write a write an offer, a contract or whatever, sure. we, we always have a place to go. And in my office, which is on the back hallway, I've many times heard footsteps, heavy steps coming up the hallway. And each of the doors have dingers. So if someone comes in or out, you know to, hey, let's go up to the front door. We may have a guest. Right. You said each of the doors, like the front and rear. Well, there's a, there's a, door. a rear door, too, okay. also has a dinger. So you know when someone's coming in or out. And, and you heard nothing. Nothing. So you go out and you stick your head out, and there's no one in the hallway. And the footsteps stop until you go back in your office. And start back? And start back. This doesn't bother you? Hell yeah, it bothers me. <laughs> but you're still there. Well, yeah, I mean, it's my job. That's... Yeah, I'm such a huge skeptic of 90% of these stories. And I still say if this stuff happened, I, I wouldn't be working there. This happened more than once. <laughs> nope. Guys, I'm going to have to 
switch companies. Dude, you have to just come over with me. We're, we're you know, when we find your house, you have to come over. We'll write the offer over there. We'll just sit there until the footsteps come. This reminds me of a story <laughs> that my parents told about a nephew of mine, uh, Justin. Justin was maybe three years old, and uh, my mom and dad, his grandma and grandpa, were having supper. And it was only the three of them, mom and dad and my nephew. And right outside the window, there was opposite the window where Justin was sitting, there was a large tree outside. And the wind was blowing pretty good. Late in the evening, the sun's setting in the west, and it's casting shadows. Well, as he's looking out the window, this young boy sees those shadows moving, and he says, if they don't, if that doesn't stop moving, I'm going to get my gun. They said, they looked and figured out what it was, and I, Justin, just shadows. He thought about it for a minute, and he said, if those shadows don't stop, I'm going to get my gun and shoot them. Oh, wow. I think I'd be a lot like Justin in this situation. <laughs> Either you leave, I'm going to shoot you, or I'm leaving. One of the so, three is going to happen. So, in that same vein, okay. Jay was telling me another story about her when she was a very young, young lady herself in Frankfurt. They lived in the third oldest house in all of Frankfurt. Okay. Grandparents lived on one side, they lived on the other. Um, in fact, it was many times she felt a presence there to the point if her parents weren't home, she would go hang out with her grandparents just as she wasn't alone. And then... And I'm going to try to get her on. I'm going to try to get her on the program so she can tell these stories because she'll do it much more justice than I am, obviously. Sure, she lived it. Yeah, she lived it. But in this one staircase, they had pictures on both sides, right and left. And if you were to go up and down the stairs, um, all of the, and I think it's the right, all the pictures on the right-hand side would not fall off the wall. They would be set down and angled so they weren't break. You leave the room, you, you put them all back up, leave the room, come back, and all of them were back down again. Don't be darned. Multiple, multiple times. Just on that one side. So I don't know. You had mentioned, oh, you had mentioned that yeah, did they do any experimentation? Did they try to figure out what it was yeah. that it didn't like? Did it not like pictures on the wall, period? Was it pictures of young women or young men or male, female? Was there anything that they could tell that it didn't like? Who knows? I'll tell you what I will know about Frankfurt. Um, one of the cool things about Frankfurt right now is most of those old buildings are in a bit of a uh, rehab. Right. There's a lot of them being redone, and there's a couple of restaurants downtown that have the old, you know, you can you can eat upstairs if you will. Mm -hmm. And I, I often wonder how much history and you know Frankfurt for those who don't know is the state capital of Kentucky. There's a lot of deals have been made done in these old restaurants. Sure. A lot of bad stuff's happened. I wonder how much all of that culminates into really cool stories. Oh, absolutely. I wonder that in usually when I'm in a really old building, it's one of the thoughts that goes through my head. Yeah. If only these walls could talk. Right. The stories they could tell. Right. How many how many people have been through when I when I worked at this one retail establishment, we had a a uh, store managers meeting every year in in uh, Abilene, Kansas. Okay. And one of the restaurants they would always treat us to was this little farmhouse restaurant. And I went in, we all went in, sat at one table, and I sat in this chair and they came out and they said, Ah, hello, Mr. President. And I'm like, Mr. President, what are you talking about? And then she told me the story. I was literally sitting in the chair that Dwight D. Eisenhower always picked. That was his hometown. We don't. And that was his chair. I was sitting in it. it same Which makes deal. you wonder. How, why, if this chair could talk, what conversations you know, did it hear over dinner, you know? But also, why doesn't this restaurant put this chair up somewhere on a right. stool and not allow anyone to sit in put it up to so make sure that can it's still see here it, but not years, years from now. Yes. Right. You don't want this thing to be worn out. And who's to say it's not? This was 15 years ago at this point. But, I would hope it has yeah. been somewhere along the line. But yeah, That's, it was cool stuff, man. I This this whole episode has given me goosebumps from the start to the end. And I love these kind of episodes, to be honest. What about you? Oh, Absolutely. 
If you guys have any stories, an encounter, an alien encounter, a Bigfoot encounter, a ghost encounter, please, please, please reach out to us. We want to hear from you. We want to we want to get your story out there. Absolutely. You won't get judged here. We're not a judgy. Well, Jerry's a little judgy. But I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> I'm not going to judge you. Um, and we, we, we'll talk about it. We'll try to figure it out. Because here at Newsworthy, the one thing we want to do is not just spread, you know, we don't want to sensationalize things. We try to not do that. But at the same time, there's some things, the Puna Poltergeist, the Bale Witch. Many of them. Uh, well, we, Bruce's story. Going along you, with the name of our show, we try to determine, number one, is it newsworthy? And yeah. number two, does it need more or less coverage? So the second part of Bruce's story there that he was talking about, I would love to go to that house um, to see. And I would, I, I want to try to get... The old church, right? No, the other one. There, oh, okay. There's a whole, oh, the whole oh, second the first half, one. The second half of his interview. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm trying to get that video. Unfortunately, Bruce's technologically challenged. I don't know that he can get it to me, but we're trying. Um, Maybe. And, and we'll see if we can have that. But anyway, so ghost and ghostly encounters, Jerry. Oh, Thumbs just, up or thumbs down? Overall, I would have to say thumbs up. Just too interesting. The stories are too good. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's like you always say, if you have one witness... It can be construed as crazy. And probably is. Not just crazy, but very highly doubtful. Ghost stories and ghost encounters happen on the daily to hundreds of thousands of people. Take the Bill Witch incident, in, for example. Well, their entire this community is known for this witch would go to church. These <laughs> aren't, yeah, one or two people may make up a story trying to get their you know, 15 minutes of fame, trying to, whatever. But when you have an entire church full of people that says this ghost came, not only came, but she out sang, out shouted, out prayed everybody in the <laughs> house. The thing ever you heard. I'm going, <laughs> it might be time for me to leave this county. Yeah, I get it. And I agree with you. Um, so anyway, I give it a thumbs up also. I love a good ghost story. Um, I know what I've encountered in the past at the church and at uh, my friend Carla's grandparents' house, and just on numerous occasions. Yeah. I, I just, and, and I really believe if you bring it on down and, and even bring in a religious aspect to it, you can't believe in one without the other. Heaven well, the Bible hell. itself, strongly, right. it, it doesn't say that they exist. It gives specific examples of not only the fact that they exist, but actions that they have taken. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you believe the Bible, you believe that these things are possible. Awesome. Well, again, if you have enjoyed the episode, please like, share, um, send us a button wherever you are. We'd love to hear from you. Send Absolutely. us an email. Uh, and thanks for joining us. And also, great bonus story about animals today. Check that out. Man, that episode is really interesting. And if you'll stick around for us for just a few commercials, we have another great story to tell you. Hi, this is Ed Lock with USA Mortgage. When it comes to buying a home, the process can be overwhelming and confusing. With so many options, it can be hard to know where to start. That's why it's important to work with a certified mortgage loan originator. I have the knowledge and expertise to guide you through the process and find the best mortgage option for you. I will work with you every step of the way to ensure that you are getting the best deal possible. So if you're looking to purchase or refinance, please reach out to me at 502-680-0953. So don't take on the stress of buying a home alone. Work with me and I will make your dream a reality. Trust the professionals and make your home buying experience a positive one. MLS ID 448-908, DAS Acquisition Company, LLC, doing business as USA Mortgage, MLS ID 227262. This is not a commitment to lend. Additional terms and conditions apply. USA Mortgage is equal housing opportunity. If you want us to review or rate your product on air, if you have suggestions for new episodes, awesome ghost stories, or anything else, please reach out to us. Our email address is newsworthywithstephenjerry at gmail.com. Our text number is area code 540-709-1318. And now... 
Back to the story. Jerry, tonight, for the bonus, we're going to talk about animal superstitions, starting with a snake. Nice. Of all the world's snakes, the one that, that which seems to have attracted the most superstitions is believed to be the adder, always a creature of ill omen. It was thought to be doubly dangerous if found dead, for then the life of the person who first discovered it was said to be forfeit to the snake. However, to kill the first adder in the scene in the spring was considered lucky, and particularly so if the fatal blow was dealt with an ash stick. People okay. back in the day were bored. <laughs> Apparently. The skin of a dead adder was once to thought had medicinal value and was worn as a hat to prevent headaches and around the limbs to pre prevent rheumatism. The fat of the adder was retained for an antidote for bites, and like other snakes, the adder is still believed that it can't die before the sun goes down. You being an old farm boy, you've heard that, right? No, never. You've never heard that? Never. Wow. Another popular belief between countrymen was that if a lizard saw a snake approach a sleeping man, that it would promptly wake the sleeper. Wake the sleeper. Hence, lizards. Good gravy! Can't speak tonight. Was generally looked upon as a good omen. Okay, but not if they crossed the path of a bridal procession. <laughs> Go figure. Right. <laughs> Toads are also very strong in superstition, and no self-respecting witch would be without one. Yet, it was generally considered lucky to meet a toad, though to kill one brought rain. Carrying a dead toad about with them was a sure way for criminals to escape detection. And um, it was no less effective preventative against epilepsy to carry a dead toad. Okay. <laughs> Frogs were also attributed with similar powers, but a frog coming into a house was thought to be a bad omen. However, girls usually use frog bones in hopes of finding their one true love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People back in the... What did we learn from bonus today? People back in the day had way too much time on their hands. I would, I would describe that a different way. I would describe what we learned as God is great, beer is good, and people are crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. And Jerry, if you can't see the light, be the light.